My name is Henri Colt. In this instructional video, we will discuss principles of endobronchial ultrasound, image distortion, and quality image acquisition. The principles of ultrasonography are the same, whether imaging the abdomen, heart, blood vessels, pleura, or mediastinum. Regardless of whether endobronchial ultrasound is performed using a radial or electronic curved array transducer, the ultrasound beam undergoes reflection, refraction, scattering, and attenuation as it passes through tissues. Each of these can affect image quality. For example, attenuation depends on tissue density, being much lower in fluid than in air. Reflection, on the other hand, depends on differences in acoustic properties between two media. The larger the proportion of reflected ultrasound, the stronger the echographic signal, such as that seen when the ultrasound beam encounters lung tissue. Ultrasound images are displayed on what is called a gray scale. The echogenicity of various tissues is defined by the amplitude of the reflected ultrasound wave. In this figure, the round structure is a blood vessel, which does not reflect sound waves at all. The structure is called anechoic. When echoes are stronger than those seen in surrounding tissues, the structure is hyperechoic, whereas when echoes are weaker than those from surrounding tissues, the structure is hypoechoic. This lymph node is hypoechoic. But this one is isoechoic, because the echoes are of comparable amplitude with the surrounding lung tissue. Penetration refers to the distance between an imaged area and the transducer. The maximum penetration depth depends on the frequency used. Higher frequencies do not penetrate as deep as low frequencies. Here, the high frequency radial probe has been placed inside a subglottic stenosis at the level of the cricoid cartilage. Hypertrophic stenotic tissues and the intact cartilage are clearly visualized, but the deeper structures are not. Using the low frequency EBUS transducer in the lower trachea, the right lower paratracheal lymph node, superior vena cava, and distal normal lung parenchyma are seen. Depth of penetration also depends on the size of the transducer. As the size of the transducer increases, the depth of penetration also increases. Here, a relatively superficial penetration depth of 5 cm is achieved using the EBUS transducer. A large transthoracic transducer, such as the one used for thoracentesis, has a 15 cm penetration depth. In the last few slides, we covered basic ultrasound physics and terminology. Now let's talk about image distortion, also known as artifacts. Artifacts are caused by normal phenomena of refraction, scattering, and attenuation. While they may interfere with the ability to identify a lymph node or a blood vessel, they can also be useful because they reveal certain tissue properties. Common artifacts seen during EBUS imaging are reverberation and attenuation. Reverberation artifacts are strong false echoes that appear as multiple equally placed lines on the ultrasound image. These occur when the water-filled balloon of the EBUS bronchoscope is not in intimate contact with the airway wall. Subsequently, ultrasound waves are repeatedly reflected between the high reflective airway wall and the transducer. Here is an example of reverberation artifact. Attenuation artifacts occur when the ultrasound beam encounters structures with different acoustic properties within the same scanning plane. The tadpole tail artifact, for example, occurs when the echo at the distal border of a low-density structure, such as an artery, 
is hyperechoic compared to that of surrounding tissues. Here is an example of the tadpole tail artifact. The acoustic shadow artifact is the reverse of the tadpole tail. The area behind a high-density structure, such as a calcified lymph node, is hypoechoic compared with surrounding tissues. Here is an example of the acoustic shadow artifact. Now that we reviewed basic ultrasound physics, terminology, and image distortions, how can we improve the quality of the ultrasound image while performing EBIS TBNA? This can be done by using the gain, depth, and Doppler functions on the image processor. Knowing how to improve image quality in order to better distinguish lymph nodes from vascular structures can enhance diagnostic yield and potentially improve the safety of EBIS TBNA. Changing gain makes the whole image brighter or darker. The loss in amplitude that occurs as the ultrasound signal propagates through tissues is corrected by amplifying the signal proportional to the depth from which the signal came. Here is an example of gain adjustments. Depth of penetration can be adjusted depending on specific needs to visualize structures that are adjacent to or at a distance from the transducer. Here is an example of depth adjustments. Doppler effect is represented by the change in frequency of a reflected ultrasound wave when it strikes a moving object, such as red blood cells and blood vessels. The angle between the scanning plane and the direction of blood flow needs to be 60 degrees or less to obtain a good Doppler signal. In this example, a good signal is obtained from the pulmonary artery, whereas a bad signal is being obtained from what actually turns out to be the aortic arch, because the direction of aortic blood flow is perpendicular to the scanning plane. In this instructional video, we covered some basic concepts pertaining to ultrasound physics, terminology, quality image adjustments, and image distortion. We hope you will find these useful when you perform EBIS TBNA. For more information pertaining to EBIS, as well as other bronchoscopic techniques, please look for us on Facebook, YouTube, and visit us at www.bronchoscopy.org.